and it could be converted to 4.25 cycles per second. And if you divide 1 by 42.5, you end up with 0 0.235 seconds, uh, which is a little less than a quarter of a second, or the time it takes to make one full cycle to complete. This is the reason why a stiffer shaft is suggested for a golfer who takes less time to complete the downswing, even though the speed at impact is the same. Okay, in our next slide, if it'll turn over here, okay. We want to further explain why swing speed alone is not the best determinant for shaft flex. I'm sure you've heard the, uh, of the term tempo. Um, it really refers to the rate of acceleration, uh, which is the relationship of velocity over time. And a golfer is definitely not going to possess a constant uh, acceleration throughout the swing. If you take a look at the diagram for a few seconds, I want you to notice um, the, the curved arrow in green. Now this represents the area of peak acceleration in the golf swing. The illustration on the far left shows where peak acceleration occurs early on in the swing and, and it's going to be what I refer to as a fast tempo. That is the time to go from the start of the downswing where the initial velocity is zero until the peak acceleration occurs it uh, occurs very quickly. For starters, the, sh the shaft would be subjected to a tremendous amount of deflection or bowing from the uh, golfer pulling down from the top of the swing so abruptly. And to compensate uh, for the greater amount of deflection that's going to occur, the shaft should, made, or should be made stiffer to counter this effect. Some of you may refer this or refer to this as an early release, where the golfer is trying to hit the ball with force starting at the top of the, the swing. In fact, the shaft is basically on cruise control as it comes into the impact zone. Well, I've heard people say that the, the shaft flex won't matter if the release occurs early in the golf swing, but it's been my experience that a shaft that's too flexible will throw off of that person's timing and rhythm. Again, one of the roles of the shaft is to provide both feel and control. So we factor in the golfer's tempo into our DSFI system by selecting a shaft with a DSFI rating very close to the golfer's actual swing speed. In the middle diagram we have labeled as moderate tempo, the purple arrow shows a gradual buildup of speed. Now the green arrow shows the area of peak acceleration which occurs later in the swing when the wrist um, becomes uncocked. And this is prior to impact and after that occurs the shaft is going to start to decelerate. And this is pretty common among golfers but the, the, the point of release or the position where the release is done uh, will vary. And because of the gradual buildup of speed versus the rapid acceleration caused by the fast tempo, the shaft will not uh, have near as much deflection, at least in the upper portion of the swing. Therefore, we feel that the shaft doesn't have to be as stiff as a golfer with a faster tempo and the same swing speed. And let me say that again. Now, with the same swing speed, the golfer with a moderate tempo should be able to use a slightly more flexible shaft. So we factor this into the DSFI system by selecting a shaft that's approximately 92 to 97 percent of the golfer's swing speed. In the diagram on the right, uh, labeled slow tempo, the golfer loads or deflects the shaft the least at, at the top portion of the swing. Some might consider this a late release or when the, re, uh, the wrist releases right before the impact with the golf ball. But think about this for one second. If a golfer has a very late release, then the peak uh, velocity is at or very close to impact. The person with a fast tempo who reaches impact at the same swing or swing speed 
actually has a higher velocity somewhere else in the swing. Again, in our system, we make adjustments for the, uh, the shaft speed range of suitable shafts for the golfer with the slower and more rhythmic tempo uh, to choose from. And just remember this, a golfer with a slower tempo is always a candidate for using a lighter and or more uh, flexible shaft than someone with a similar swing speed but with a faster tempo or a shorter length swing. And while the DSFI has a number like 90, remember, it's just an index. This is the reason why we have a DSFI range, like 87 to 101, for each shaft, and that takes into account the tempo variations. Now there's some club fitters who do not use club head speed to fit shafts at all. Rather, they use performance-based fitting, which is to have their customer demo different type shafts, different weights, different stiffness, different uh, stiffness distributions, twerks, etc., until they find a shaft that works well for the golfer. Just think of what happens when you go to see the eye doctor or ophthalmologist. This may be very well the best way to fit, but it does take a long time to fit a golfer as they may get tired, um, and the testing may have to be repeated uh, to really nail down the right type of shaft. For the fitter, it could be very expensive to offer such a wide range of shafts that could conceivably fit each and every golfer that walks into their shop. Now the DSFI was set up in some ways as a shortcut. <clears throat> For example, once you found a shaft that works well, you can look at shafts with similar specifications, or what I like to refer to as the DNA of the shaft. The testing we have done allows for this type of fitting, plus helps to see the small differences in what appears to be similar shafts on paper. Now, after the proper DSFI range, weight, and the material have been chosen based upon the person's swing speed and tempo, then the shafts could be narrowed down. We talked about stiffness distribution. Well, a shaft that has a low bend point or kick point or a high launching shaft in some cases may help to hit the ball higher. But there's other cases where the softer tip shaft may help close the club face prior to impact and reducing the penalty for a push, a slice, or a fade. In closing the club face at impact, the higher launch uh, won't be noticed, but it may help with the accuracy. Now the high bend point or low launching shaft can do just the opposite. Um, but these are some of the considerations in shaft, select, uh, in shaft selection based on our preferences. Um, this may also take into account how much the golfer wants to spend, as this is a biggie, especially with the cost of shafts today. And the player may also want a, uh, want a shaft to color coordinate with the head, the grip, or the golf bag. Believe me, over all these years, I've heard it all. The customer may ask for a specific brand, or they may be content on a shaft or a shaft manufacturer that may not be a household name, um, but as long as it gets the job done, that's all they care about. And does the person need something to help dampen shock? Or, is, or are you going to find a shaft that has an adequate uh, length if you need to make the, the club um, longer than normal uh, based on the person's height? These are all ways to filter out the possible shaft selections. But let's look at the shafts that are listed here on this page. All have the same DSFI uh, rating, or essentially the same, and they all weigh fairly close to one another. Here you can see some of the data we provide, and to show you some of the uh, subtle differences uh, between the different shafts. For example, now all these happen to be R-flat,